Hello, it's Abbott Austin for another episode of Talk Lexio, where we do Lexio Divina on a biblical passage. And today we will use the St. Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 3, verse 17. I'm just going to take a really short uh, section. It's just, this comes from the second reading for uh, Sunday's Mass, the second Sunday of Lent in the year C. Um, so again, this is the letter to the Philippians, chapter 3, verse 17. Let's begin with prayer. In the, name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord, open our hearts and our minds to understand your scriptures, that we may know your will and have the joy of living by it through Christ our Lord. Amen. So the first step of Lexi Divina, of course, is to read the passage carefully, attentively. What is God saying to us through this uh, passage? Um, as usual, uh, as I've said before, you know, feel free to read the passage over and over. I'll put it in the description. I'll read it simply once, though. Join with others in being imitators of me, brothers, and observe those who thus conduct themselves according to the model you have in us. Okay, when you read the passage, you've thought about it, read it again and again, uh, we want to move to the second step, which is meditation. One of the things that happens when we meditate and think about scripture, a passage can, one of the things that can happen is that we're kind of um, struck by it, it seems wrong. Right? It strikes us as kind of bad in some way. A passage like this might do that, right? St. Paul is saying, join with others in being imitators of me, right? Um, we don't always take kindly to someone who just says, you know, do what I, I'm doing, follow, follow me, right? It can seem a bit arrogant, right? That's not the case, though. And so it can strike you that way. You might, it might seem that way, but uh, what, when, we, when this happens, when, we, when a passage of Scripture strikes us as being somehow wrong, we want to keep wrestling with it, right? Try to see how it's true. This is the inspired Word of God. So God is saying something through the passage. So how might we think about this? Perhaps one way is to think of it as teaching, right? St. Paul has received the gospel, and he is on fire to share this with other people by teaching it to them, right? So he has received it. He's benefited from it. It's his salvation, the gospel. And now he wants to teach and to preach it to other people, right? And that's an act of charity because what you've received, you don't want to just hoard it up for yourself. You want to actually give it to others so that they can benefit from it as well. Okay, when St. Paul says, be imitators of me, see it in that way, perhaps, right? Right? Because remember, we teach not just by what we say, but by our example. So St. Paul has received the gospel. He's living by it. He's conducting himself according to the truth of the gospel, the good news that Jesus came to save us from our sins and has risen to new life, which he offers us. Right. So uh, living according to that gospel proclamation is what St. Paul himself is doing. And he wants then, by his example, to show others the way to do that so they can live in the fullness of Christ. Right? So it's actually an act of charity in that sense. Right? And we too are called to this. Right? People notice how we act. So we want our example to be good. We're, we are teaching people. Whether or not we say anything, right? We are teaching people by the way we conduct ourselves. And so if we want to teach people good things, we want to teach them the richness of the gospel that we have received, then we have to show that in our actions and by our example. That's a tall order, of course, right? Um, that's pretty difficult, and we all fail um, more than we'd like to admit at that, uh, whatever the failure might be. Uh, but there is something even in that that we can teach people, and it's humility, right? And it's also repentance. We fail. We can acknowledge that, and we can seek repentance, right? And when we do that, and we live in that way, too, that also is an example to other people. Uh, none of us are perfect. We all fail, but we're striving, right? And we can come to our merciful Lord and ask for forgiveness, call our failings what they are, sins, right? And then ask the Lord for repentance. That itself is an example to other people for them of how to live the gospel, right? All right, the third step of Lexia Divina is to offer a prayer based on our meditation. And in this prayer, you want to ask something of the Lord. So I'll offer such a prayer now, but I would invite you to think of and offer such a prayer yourself. Almighty God, I ask you to guide all that I do, that I may teach others by my own example, and that I may teach them by my example your goodness and the richness of the gospel. I ask this through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. And then the fourth step of Lex Divina is to rest in the presence of God. Uh, when you pray for something, remember when you ask the Lord for something good, you're you're seeking it. And so your will lines up with God's will, right? God wants that good thing for you. And so now you want it too. So your will lines up with God's will. You become close to God in that, and you rest in that closeness in this fourth step of Lexia Divina. So let's just offer a few moments of contemplative rest. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining me. May God bless you. Please pray for us here at St. Procopius Abbey.